Android 13 Beta 3 running on the Pixel 6. So it was actually just, just like they did with Beta 2, there was a small update that literally came out just a few moments ago with the uh, with the operating system. Six megabyte update didn't do it because I didn't want it to infringe on what I wanted to show you with the 13 Beta 3 update. So I left it be. I, I don't know if it's going to make a huge difference. I tried to look up some patch notes on it. Didn't see anything on it. It was probably just a bug fix. Overall, I've been pleased with Beta 3. I like some of the things that they've done in regards to security. I understand a lot of people are going to say, yeah, okay, they're doing stuff with security, but how secure can you really make Android? I get that. I understand it. But to know that privacy is at least at the front of the conversation, is at least something that's being used as an advertising ploy to get people to buy these devices. If there's a competition over your dollar when it comes to privacy, and these companies kind of have to compete to who's going to be the most secure, that's a good thing. We all win in that case. So let's talk about two things when it comes to that. Well, one that's more about security, one's just more about permissions and annoyances. The first thing that I love that they did with Beta 3 is that you can see it right here. Review notification settings. Starting in Android 13, apps that you install need your permission to send notifications. Tap to change this permission for existing apps. That's fantastic. We're actually going to go through that right now. But how many apps that you get and download and you just don't even pay attention to or you don't want to hear from and you don't bother to go into the notifications and look and see how many DraftKings notifications do I need? Really? I log in there once a month. Now, you lose enough money with crypto. You don't need to go on DraftKings. But it's nice to be able to go app by app from the start when it installs and say, hey, I don't need these notifications. Especially a lot of you I know are complaining about T-Mobile notifications getting a little out of hand. AT&T could be the same way. So it's nice to be able to control those on an app-by-app -app basis and give you the option up front. So let's go ahead and do that, see what it looks like. Tap right in, and here it is, most recent by app. This is something that you could have done, pulled down notifications, gone into notification settings, and it would give you a similar menu. But it is nice to have it up front when you're installing it and then when you install an app. So I'll go ahead and leave these for now. You know what? I'm going to turn off LinkedIn. If you have LinkedIn, you'll know how annoying that is. eBay. You know how annoying it could be. It gives you these seller offers all day long. It's not something that you need constant updates from. So it's nice to be able to do that. The other thing that does apply directly to security is a big one. It's something that Wi-Fi notifications. So now it'll actually allow you to scan for Wi-Fi networks, but it'll no longer give up your location information of this device. So you can scan for nearby Wi-Fi hotspots when you're out and about, but it's not going to give up your location anymore, which is a good thing because even when you had mobile networking and mobile data off and you thought in GPS off and you thought maybe, well, that's going to keep me off the grid or it'll at least give me some privacy and security and that people can't track me or, or my apps can't track me or stuff like that. Well, not exactly because they can take Wi-Fi networks and you're, if you're in range of enough of them, they know the locations of those Wi-Fi networks and if you're pinging those, if you're connecting to those, or at least within range of those, they can kind of triangulate your position. They, I, I sound like I got a tinfoil hat on. You know what I'm talking about. It's just one extra layer of privacy and location data that you don't have to worry about. Because even though you're not doing anything, even though no one is probably actively tracking you at any given time, your apps do use that information. Facebook uses that information. Instagram uses that information. Heck, even Google uses that information. If you've been somewhere and then you go back somewhere and you get that little notification, hey, you've been here before. Or, hey, you just ate it uh, so-and-so. Would you like to leave a review? That stuff is nice to know that you have an extra layer of protection now. If you don't like those things, if you don't want Google, if you don't want your apps, Facebook, knowing where you went, knowing what restaurants you go to and what stores you shop at, and then tailoring ads to that, that's perfectly valid. It, it, that's not a tinfoil hat thing. That's not living in a log cabin thing. That's just not wanting to be kind of pursued by different apps based on where you've been previously. So that's nice that Wi-Fi networks now can, you can look for Wi-Fi networks. You could connect to Wi-Fi hotspots, but don't have to deal with the location data that goes along with it. Small stuff, 
navigation bar. Some people said, oh, they're going after, uh, they're making it like iOS navigation bars a little bit bigger. I, you knew to swap from, uh, swipe from the bottom of the screen, right? <laughs> Did anybody have to? <laughs> Whether it was there or not, I don't think I've ever seen the thing or paid attention to it or the size of it from bo- swiping at the bottom of the screen. I think that's pretty universal now with gestures. We know to swipe from the bottom of the screen, but they made the navigation bar a little bit bigger, a little bit easier if you're pulling up for Google services or Google Assistant or something like that. You have a little bit easier time finding it on your Pixel 6. The other thing that's that's going to be Pixel 6 specific, I think anyway, is performance. I said this with Beta 2. I'm going to say it again with Beta 3. This has been absolutely excellent. This is the performance and the Google Pixel experience that I wanted when I first bought the device. Fingerprint sensor still has a little bit way to go. So it's not fantastic. But, but, the fact that it just scrolls up and down when you're going through apps, when you're going through Twitter, when you're going through Instagram, the scrolling. I said that this was the, Twitter was one of the worst experiences on Android, on the Pixel 6, on Android 12. It is now absolutely one of the better experiences on Android, on Android 13. Very nice, very snappy. They're absolutely locking the performance of the Tensor in. You can feel it. It feels like a finished product. It feels like something you want to run on your phone. It's just been an overall fantastic performance. Battery life is held. No issues there. I'm still getting my six hours of screen on time. Should you install it? That's a different story. You know, Serrano, C. Butler is a great channel. He had an issue where he tried, he installed 13, tried to go back to 12, bricked his Pixel 6. That's something that's going to happen. This is a beta. So if this is a device that you rely on for work, if you have some work-specific applications that you need, mission-critical stuff, don't install a beta. Because there's always a chance that the API that you need for that particular app isn't going to work, and you're going to be wind up being stuck, and you're trying to go back to Android 12, and you're going to brick it. So uh, for Twitter, for Instagram, for texting, for Google Messages, for Facebook, for YouTube stuff, this is going to be just fine. But if you have stuff that's a, a work-specific device, or, a, or this is your only form of communication with your family, or getting stuff done, hold off until September until the final release, because you're going to be fine. But you are going to be pleased. And if you're somebody who's just struggling with Android 12, and you don't care, maybe this is a secondary device, maybe you got nothing to lose. As long as you get texts and calls, which it'll do, and Twitter, and you're fine with that, and you're just sucking wind on Android 12, go ahead and install it, because you're going to be pleased. You're going to be really pleased with the performance on this device, the Pixel 6, on Android 13. I can't wait for the full release. It makes me excited for the Pixel 7 now. Really does, you know, and, and coming from me, we've said it before, only Nixon could go to China. You know, I, I bashed the Google devices enough. We've had our, our disagreements <laughs> over what's going on with the Pixel 6. I absolutely think they fumbled it. But if it gets better and better, if the support gets better and better, if they, if they kind of parlay that into a great Pixel 7 software experience with Android 13, if they're able to improve the Tensor experience on uh, the Pixel 6 devices on Android 13, Listen, you got to give credit where credit is due. And so far, so good on Android 13. That is, has, has extended into the Beta 3. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.